the card. Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the free weekly outlook. Um, I'm glad to see so many of you in here. I think we will still get more people as we go along because only 260 right now. We normally get about 360. So everybody asking me about the course because it seems like there's a lot of new people here. For those of you who registered, and that's more than 100 people who registered for the next course, right? Those of you who are interested in that course, I will give you the details for payment at the end of the month. Right? We have a very we have a bigger team of trainers right now. It will be at the end of this month. Don't forget to send me an, uh, an uh, 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 email, uh, a Skype message if you don't get it by the end of July. Right? The course will start in September, so you will have one month with us before the course starts. That will give you, you will have access to the past recordings, and that will give you a head start in understanding. Be prepared for questions when we start to do it live. Right? That's about it. I don't want to promote more of the course because there was many questions. That's about it. For those who ask, who are new and ask me how to contact me to get it, I don't have a website. Like I said, you just add me to Skype. It's M type M A N G A L 457. Write that down. Add me to Skype because I don't have a website and I'll send you the details. So let me repeat it for those of you who don't know. That's not my main business. My main business, I'm a trainer. I'm a trader. That's the first thing. And then a trainer. So I'm not, you don't see me. You can hear me say whatever I want to say, which is, I think, what the market is doing true to itself. I don't have to say things to satisfy people. Not on any website. I don't have a website. So it's only people who are interested in what I do join me. I have a group, a very active group of traders. And I also do a daily webinar for them. Plus, we have an, uh, a 24-5 trading room that is working very good right now. I still think it can get better than where it, what it's doing, but it's working amazing right now. We have a lot of successful traders. The last time I did, a, 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 I think it was two weeks ago, we did a, a poll finding out how our traders are doing. Only 17% of the traders who completed the course were not making profit. So I will do one like in the next two months and I'll see where they are again. Those who are not making profit, they have access to Skype me to, to talk to one of the trainers and we always try to help traders on a daily basis. We do extra courses, we do extra, sorry, extra classes, we do marathon training. That is from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I, I will just train traders the whole day. Every half an hour, another trader has a chance to come, present his chart live, show me what he's doing, I'll correct what he's doing and go on. And tomorrow we schedule something new, which we have never done. It's going to be a marathon trading day. So I would be in the room from 5 a.m. Moscow until 10 p.m. Moscow. I'll be in the trading room for the entire day. All the traders who are there will have the chance to ask me questions while we trade live. So we're going to look at the charts. We're going to take trades. And when there isn't a trade or we are already in trades going, managing what we have, they will have the, they will have the ability to ask me questions that is for my traders only only for my traders right that is if you're in part of my group already we do this very regular because we are here to, to make traders successful that's the only purpose we're here and we don't you don't have to play a subscription for that it's free for life once you take the course you're you're free you're in the room for the rest of your life free to become a good trader and then to help somebody else become a good trader so all of our successful traders, their basic job, staying around, is to help another guy gets better. And they themselves even get better at it. As we work and we, we're developing, right now we're already looking at stocks. We're looking at indexes. We're looking at a lot of new instruments that we didn't do before. We're going to do all of that. So this group is growing and everything is going amazing. Right? Thank you for being here and thank you for your support too. So let's go do the webinar, the reason you're here. No more of that, right? Let's go. Let's start with the dollar in. Uh, let me go back to the dollar index. Dollar index. If you were with me last week, you would remember I said there's a possibility that the dollar index will get one more up before they come down. That didn't happen. It actually dropped. And that was a little surprise for me because I really thought this was, was going to make the bigger correction before they go. And they didn't make the bigger correction. That means... That doesn't mean the structure doesn't work. That means the bigger correction is still coming. 
they still have to make. It's, it's an extension of this wave. If you're looking at it right now, this one wave here is extended. Right? That means there's still a bigger wave coming correction before it goes wrong. Right? No, it's, it's, it's not that the wave count is wrong. It's that my, I, my expectation of where the wave ended is wrong. Right? Remember what we do is forecasting. We use what we have and we make a forecast as to what it could do next. I get it wrong sometimes. When I'm wrong, I'm not in a trade. So I noticed some traders said, well, you said you were going to go down. I took the sell and I lost. I was like, well, your problem. Because I didn't say you should sell it in the first place. The second thing is, if you're going to sell it, you have to wait for confirmation. All of you know the way we trade. Well, at least some of you know the way we trade. You wait for that confirmation before you, you take the trade. We never got a confirmation for a euro sell. I will actually show you where we got a euro sell, went in the profit, came back. Is it a break-even trade or you're still in the trade? I'll show you guys that trade. I'm still in the trade, so I'll show you in the trade. So this, this trade went down. We did get some trades and we got some amazing trades. If you were following what I was saying, you should have been in the Euro Oz buy, the Euro New Zealand buy. You should have been in the Pong Oz buy, the Pong New Zealand buy. All those were trades we actually made money on because they did perfectly what we expected them to do. Some of the majors did not move that way. So let's go to the Euro. What are we expecting of the Euro? I think we're going to make, remember I said the deeper correction is still in play. So we did not get the buy in the Euro because we were expecting this. To come down one more then go right it went up we did not get the buyer surprise but we got a sell my first sell in the euro was right in here see that piece that spiked down put this in profit go back and it's going to be back in profit i kept the trade because it was a small trade and it's a trade that will go into profit we are still expecting a deeper correction in the euro so let's go back to the euro you notice we have divergence in the chart if you look at the divergence here it means we are expecting this to come deeper, and I'm expecting them to break the trend line here again. This time breaking the trend line, giving me a bigger correction before any upside. If it is going to be a bigger trend to the upside on the daily, and there's a possibility that it will make a bigger trend, there's a possibility that this goes up more to break this stop. And if they're going to do that, they will have to make a deeper correction then do that. So that is what we are expecting. Based on this whole structure we're looking at, it's going to be either a running flat or an expanding flat, and euro will go down some more. Yep, expanding flat. You see, those of you who know this stuff, it's easy, right? Once you know what you're looking for. If you don't know, well, then it becomes difficult. It becomes voodoo for you. For us, I'm looking. It could also be a running flat, and they go from here, test the low, and then go back up, right? That's a, that's a possibility. The second thing we're thinking, I'm thinking expanding flat. So if I'm wrong, I make a lot of money because I'm in the cell. Right? Because we have a sell setup and we are expecting that to go. Uh, if it's a running flat, well, then it's going to just be going down. How would we know it's one out of the two? It's easy. Watch what this is going to do when it breaks the trend line. You're going to get an impulse first. You're going to get a correction. And if you get this correction, you sell again. That will be big selling. That doesn't mean we don't sell this. Right? So let's go look at what is a trade in this. I think some of you are already in the sell because you should have seen this pattern here. Right? Anybody took that sell? Come on, don't tell me you've been here so long and you don't get that trade yet. That's a possible trade you should have taken. Right. At least if you're following me for a while, you know that that's a trade you'll take. And you're looking for this down here, right? So this thing is going to come more. What you can do is move it to break even and leave it. Let's see how far it goes. Right? It's easy. It's not difficult to do once you understand. I think this is the first impulse of a bigger correction to the downside. So let's see how it goes. The worst case scenario is you get a break even on the trade. And what is the, I mean, what's the big difference even if you take a loss? One guy said he lost his account on a single, on one single trade on the euro, he lost his account. Well, my answer to people like that is you should not trade. You shouldn't be trading in the first place. If you're losing your account on one trade, you really have a problem. No, he, maybe he's serious. I'm not saying he's troll. Maybe he did lose his account, but then he shouldn't be trading because he knows nothing about trading. That's like knowing absolutely nothing about trading. To lose. No, he's probably new. I'm not saying he's more, and I would say he's probably new to trading. So anybody who's new to trading, you should not be trading live. You will lose your money. Here's the thing. If you trade live when you're new to trading, you will lose your money. There's no question to that. There's a reason I don't take traders 
in the trading room who doesn't have one year experience. Because if you pay me to teach you and you, have, you don't have one year experience, you, will, you wouldn't understand a single thing I'm teaching you. You take one year and trade a demo, go through the internet, look at all the free webinars, look at everything you can find on the internet, do one year research, learn some things, learn the basic stuff, and then you will make a, a very educated decision what you need to know if you really want to become a pro trader. And by then, if you think you like what we do, the way the strategy we use, the methods we use, how we analyze the chart, you can join us. If you don't, you can go learn support and resistance. I'm okay with that. Basically, right? So by then you will have one year experience and you will be able to do that. Don't, don't pay anybody to teach you if you don't have a year experience. Because the people who are taking newbies to teach them are the people who are literally saying, give me $500 and you can go to hell because you're gonna, you, I will teach you nothing I'll teach you some basic stuff that you can get for free and you will learn nothing. You will not become a trader. I guarantee you, you will not become a trader. I paid $5,000 to do that. And that didn't make me a trader. Actually, it, it, it just put me back for a couple of months because I learned support and resistance. I had to go on and learn all of that. So it's a waste of your time. Don't do that if you're new. Take your time, go through the internet, learn all the free stuff, spend about a year. You will, after a year, you'll be educated enough to make a decision whether you still want to be a trader and whether you really want to learn this stuff. That's the whole thing, right? Let's go. Pong. We also took the sell this morning. There was a news event and we took the sell. We normally trade the news event. At a, we have a specific way of trading it. And we are in that trade. As you can see right now, that trade should go to break even because this Pong also was a surprise. Let me just show you. We thought we'll get one more down. I was looking at this structure to make one, two, three, four, five, and then go up, right? Well, it didn't do that. And this is a very distinctive pattern. And we have noticed, this is, this is a new pattern we have noticed in the chart. It happens not very often, but it's very distinctive in the way it happens. You get a flat, you break the flat, and then they reverse back to the low before they go. Now, my traders have given that, that pattern a very funny name. So we're not gonna we are not gonna go to the name as yet, but there is a very good chance that this thing repeats itself, which means we will come back, retest this low here, and then go for the next impulse. Right? Yes, my traders have given it a very funny name. Like I said, I really don't want to repeat that name. They give it here. They, no, they will have to find the name. Somebody's gonna type the name if I tell them to. But I think we'll we'll stay away from that. You don't want to make too much fun of it, right? So. We're gonna look for this to come back here, complete the X wave and then go up because the X wave is not completed, right? So what we are thinking is that this will go. Now there's a good chance that this might not be that pattern, which means they will, that pattern is not proven is that they will consolidate here and then go. So if they consolidate here, you will get a very small profit out of that. You will get out of the trade. You will be in the buy to the upside. But if they repeat that pattern that we see, the sell is a good one and it will come very fast. It goes up very fast, come down back very fast. I think I can show you that in about six different charts because we identified them in a number of charts already. So if this is going to make that pattern, it's gonna come down pretty fast. It's not gonna consolidate a lot. If we're wrong about it, then we will get this come here, go back there, come here, go back there, and then go up. If you see this consolidation, you're a buyer from here, right? You can buy from here. So within that consolidation, you're going to get some small buys and sells. But if you're right about it, the, long, the one big sell give you a good move. If you're wrong about it, you get a big buy coming after the consolidation. Right? But I think if, if we think that Aussie, New Zealand, Euro going down, we might all, all also see the, the, the pong goes down some more. This one cannot be confirmed as yet. So if you're trading this one, trade it with care, which means when you get in the trade and you get some profit, put it to break even. This is what we did. We got in the trade, we have some profit, we were putting it to break even. Let's see if it drops, right? If at any point it drops and it make a flag, sell again. It drops and it make a flag, sell again, because you will not get deep pullback. If that happens, right? I can't say if it's gonna happen, but here's what we will do. We will track it during the day. And if it's happening, remember, we update these charts daily. So what I show you today is giving you long-term vision that might change. If that changes within, within a couple hours, we update the charts and we said, okay, guys, it's not doing this. We're getting a consolidation. Look for a buy setup, right? Or, you know, depends on what it's doing. Aussie, 
Aussie moved up a little. This was a buy setup we saw. You could have put an entry order here for that trade. I did not take it. Some of my traders did. Aussie, it is a point where they have to tell us now what they're going to do because it is either this triangular pattern is over. I think we can look at one, two, three, four, five, and they're going up. Or it's making not a triangle anymore, but a more complex B wave, and it will come down for a C wave. Right? That could be a more complex B wave in there, and we come down for a C wave. That possibility still exists. Now, I'm more inclined to think it's going to go up. I don't think we're going to get the big down move here, but they still have to prove that, which means if they break this trend and they pull back, we will all be sellers. And if they do that, we'll be selling to break this low, which means it will be a deeper pullback. If they continue to go up, and I believe they'll continue to go up, I may be wrong on that because we can't prove it. They haven't broken the top and they're still within the consolidation. And once they're within the consolidations, the consolidation can become more complex, right? That is something, if you've seen the punk ad, I think I've shown everybody already the punk ad, you have seen that it took two years to consolidate before it went up, but it still go up, which means Aussie will still go up. The question, is it going up now, or will it break this and go down? So if you're in the Aussie cell, and some of you are, I know that, because some of you have wrote me and told, asked me, and you told me you're in the cell, what should you do? And I said, keep the trade. So if you took the cell on the Aussie here or here, any one of those two were good trade with a stop here, move that stop to break even. And wait, because if this does something like this, it will drop again. If they reverse, you get a break-even trade, but take a buy here. Make sure you buy on the breakout. Because the buy on the breakout could actually mean the start of the uptrend. Once they break out of this structure, that will confirm the upside. So we can get the trade before they actually break out. Right? Watch this trade. It could go down. And I think it's going to go down. So what you will do is you'll put this here. If they drop, if they just keep dropping and you're in the trade already, you don't have to worry about it. Any pullback, once they break this trend line, if they do break the trend line, right? That will mean long-term downside. We'll be looking for long, by, that might be by next week. We will be back here to discuss that trade because it will have to break, make consolidation, and then there'll be a long-term trade to the downside, right? Keep all your questions. I'll answer them at the end of the webinar. Just remember what your question was. New Zealand went up a little higher, but New Zealand wasn't a surprise to us because we anticipate that New Zealand could come break this stop and then go down. We anticipated that move because remember we said, if this is making a one, two, three for a flat in the middle there, then they will probably do this, come back to the low, right? If this is all the consolidation and this is going up, they will have to make a flag here. Not a flag, make a correction and then go. So a sell set up in the New Zealand at the top was a good idea and I, we sold it. We actually sold it. It went up a little higher and now it's coming back down. So I think we sold it in the first breakout. I think it was somewhere in here. This breakout here we sold and then it went up, came back, went up. It's coming down and we are back to about square one. So once it breaks this structure, you can look for a sell setup. It's not worth selling it now. We're looking to either get out for break even or we're looking to see whether it's going to break. So if they don't break out, some of my traders are a little lucky. Those who saw that could have sold it this morning. If any one of you saw this and sold it this morning, you did well, right? That was a nice sell setup, but I was already in the trade. So what we're going to look for here now is a break of this structure. Once they break it, they'll pull back and that will confirm the downside. We stay in that trade. If they start to reverse here, we'll take the trade off. Probably a small loss. I don't know, 20 pips loss or so. In terms of percentage, I don't know, 0.2% of the account because it's on a 1% risk, right? So I don't think that would be a problem. But if you look at the squeeze they're getting at the top here, right? I, I'm really thinking downside is a possibility. If you look at this, this type of pattern, right? Downside is a good possibility. Can, they can literally just spike it up some more like this, but if they do that, they'll fall. So there, there, is, there is the downside in it that you need to watch for, right? There's a downside coming. And if they break this structure, wait for it to break. If they make a flag inside of this structure here and they break this flag, then you can sell as well, right? That's the sell setup, actually. So either they make the sell setup. If they're going up one more, don't take the buy. Buying before they break this structure here is a dangerous one.
if you if you buy this before they break the top of that structure you can you know you can fall trapped probably if you're lucky you get out for break even if you're unlucky they'll do this reverse and you know make a bigger correction right so look for a cell setup we're we're in the cell and we're looking for more cell setups because i don't think the upside is possible as yet they need to correct and then go yen yen is in the middle of nowhere yen didn't do anything new we expected yen to, to go up some more and it's going up some more it's actually sideways i thought this one would made it third wave and go but they're just crawling up which is nothing is wrong with that it's a good sell setup once they crawl they're going to go up more i think they're going to go up more i think they may just tag that top and then start to come back here right i believe they'll tag the top the buy setup wasn't there and it still doesn't have a buy setup if you look at it if they come back to the low and go back again you can look for a buy setup right they'll probably come and go they'll have to tag that top before they go down it's not the best trading right now because when they're in that consolidation they just tend to go more mostly sideways right it's a big consolidation i showed you last week that consolidation is not over i'd say it's still in a this whole big thing is a consolidation and this one is in the b wave of that if you take this as your a wave you're in some kind of a b wave consolidation here come back and then go right something like that that is that is the pattern we are anticipating now if that pattern changes then we start actually looking for long-term upside trade. So far, I don't see a change in the pattern. For the whole week last week, it didn't change anything. I don't think this week it will change anything, right? You're up 150 pips. I think you can keep it, put it to put it to positive, because you can you can actually go to that top. But remember, it will not go there like this it might come back here and then go so you will have to make a decision if, if i were you i'll just watch this piece here if this starts to come back move my stop let it take me out and buy back again from the bottom these are short-term trades if you're interested so if you're up in profit you you know you can this is in a consolidation you're not expecting long-term trade so i'll i'll go with profit usd cad cad did not give us the big pullback we're looking for same here I thought this speed would go there and then come down. We know this trade is coming. We just didn't think they were going to come immediately. And they just dropped immediately, which left me with a surprise. Because now, remember the big trade we were talking about. I think all of you remember. If this is starting to go, it means this piece here will make a small pullback like that. And we will sell. You're not going to get any deep pullback anymore. Right? You're not going to get any deep pullback anymore. You're going to get small pullback and sell setup if this is going. I want all of you to watch where it is right now. It's at this level here. Any pullback here, we sell. And once they make one more drop, that's it. It's going to go forever. It's not going to stop. So let's go back to the four hour now. We're starting to make some consolidation. I don't mean a small one like that. I mean something more like this. And if you get this trade, we all sell because once this drops here, that's the, that confirms the downside. Breaking this low here would be like the last barrier to confirm the downside. The downtrend, it, it's going. It's, it's not that it started, but it's going, right? And if they go back above here, if they go above this line, we would watch to see what the setup is because that means they can retest the top, right? We, I don't see a retest of the top coming as yet. We will know that by next week. Right now, you can all look for a short-term buy because remember, they have to pull back, right? This has to pull back. I think this will probably do something like that. So there may be a short-term buy here, but the bigger trade should be to the downside, right? We're expecting this to pull back up there and then go down. How it's going to pull back? Your, any, anybody's call. Will it be a triangle? Will it be a flat? Would it be, you know, anything zigzag? It could be like this one here, one, two, three. It might be smaller than that. So I think right now, short term, you're looking for an upside. There's no sell setup anymore. We are breaking out. We got a one, two, three here. They will probably make a short wave. They could probably come back here, go back there, something like this. And if we get something like this, we look for the sell setup. If you want to trade short term, there's a short buy there. Put it to break even. If you're lucky, you get a spike up and then downside. If you're not lucky, they go 20 pips, come down back, go back up, and you don't really get any good trade. 
it it, it will go back all the way to the top. That that's a that's a tough call. I don't think they're going to go back all the way to the top. We were more inclined to think downside, but it's not confirmed. The downside is not fully confirmed as yet in terms of structure, right? In terms of structure, there is a possibility for one more, but if they consolidate here, like I said, if you just got to have patience, this will take the whole week. And if they do this the whole week this week, the next move is to the downside. So at least one week, maybe two, three days, you're going to see this consolidation, and then you're going to see the downside. Short-term trade, yeah, they're actually going to go back up. There's a short-term buy setup forming right now. They break this, you take the trade, they probably come back down here, take another one up there, and then if they make this structure, we're all selling, right? Can I show my trading room how many screens? You have no idea how our trading room work, right? So <laughs> I'll explain to you at the end of the webinar. It's not something I can show you. I'll explain to you at the end of the webinar. Uh, USD Swiss. This is what I'm talking about when I said the CAD has to pull back. And that is why I say if you take this small trade here in the CAD, you might get lucky like this, right? This is still going up, right? That's a pullback we were expecting. I think downside is more here. Watch it. It's pulling back pretty strong. Right? So this trade pulling back, if you're taking that by, it's the cat has a setup just like this now, right? You may get lucky and this happen. If you're lucky, this goes up all the way here. Now, what happens here is the big question. We got divergence. And that means we're expecting a bigger correction. I'm expecting this. We were expecting this to make a bigger, we we're expecting this to make that bigger correction and one more drop. One, two, three, four, five. Five. We're expecting this to pull back deep here and then one more drop. So you can start to look for buy setups if they break the trend line, right? That is if they break this trend line, because if they don't break this trend line, you could get one more drop right here and that will end the move, right? Breaking this low will end the move. So either we get a short term sell right now, this consolidates here and we get a short term sell or we will let them break, pull back, and then we look for a buy all the way to the top, right? The buy will not be one move. It's not going to be like that. It might be more, more choppy like this, going slowly, pull back, go again, like a three-wave pattern. You could get one impulse up. You could get a pullback here, and then you could get another impulse like that. So somewhere here, we'll get a trade. We'll wait for them to pull back, and then we'll take that trade, right? Oh, oh one second, guys. Somebody's calling me right now. Let me pause the recording. I'll be back in one second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go. So for, for all the trades, we are looking, we're looking all the, we've, we completed all the majors. We're either looking for very deep pullback or at least an impulse in the opposite direction. So this will be very impulsive up or a deep pullback. Or Euro, Swiss, Euro, Pong, Aussie, New Zealand, deep downside, one more impulse to the downside, or deep pullback, and they go. So in any case, you're looking for dollar strength and weakness in all the majors, right? Yep, record is pressed again. Thank you for reminding me. It's recording. So let's go. Euro, Aus, we took the buy. I think all of you should have took the buy. We explained that this was a good buy setup. We're looking for a pullback, and we're looking for one more up to about this level, and then we should see downside. I think that was the forecast the last time. How many of you got that trade? Because we got it. Some of us in our trade, trading room got that, right? Right? Anybody got this trade? Great. Well done. Let's go. You're in New Zealand. Same thing. Some of us got that trade. If you got that trade, this is what you need to do. So let me go into Euros. What is the trade for, for, for this week? There's a short trade set up here. If you take that short, just be careful because it might not go very far. They can spike up again, but there's a good chance they'll make a low first, right? We complete the tree wave, but there's a good chance, you know, this one, it, if it comes, it's going to come to about this level, then probably go back up. I think this is a correction and they will make one more down before they go. They're making a bigger correction in here. So you can take the sell setup. It's a short-term sell setup right now. Maybe this week, that is all you get. And after that, we'll be looking for more upside. Right after that, we'll be looking for more upside. Euro New Zealand, there's a sell setup. And this, this one is a perfect well sell setup you can look for. 
It's short term. I think they'll probably just do this and then we'll get more upside again. This one is a very short term trade here, right? Uh, you're still holding buys in which one? If you're holding buys in the Euro, Oz, and the Euro New Zealand, you have to be very, very long term on them because uh, they are correcting right now. I think you probably take profit and look for buys again a little lower because this one is definitely going to make a low here and before it goes back up. You can see that, right? This is correcting here and after that we'll get upside. So there's a sell set up here and then you'll look for the buy set up to the upside. So those are the two trades and both of them may happen this week, which means I think today, tomorrow, this sell is going to happen, right? This sell could happen today or tomorrow, right? This could break any time. Even if it goes one more up like this, it's going to come down back and break here. This would be your trade. And this may finish in less than a day and they start to go back up. So by next week, we may be on the uptrend again, right? We may be in an up move. So watch this. Watch this trade. Daily, you are in New Zealand 618. Daily, it's in a correction. It's just in this. We, we broke out of this structure here, right? Remember, we broke this. We made a move up. We break this. So we're making this. We'll probably do this, probably do that. And then we may come here and go back up or just continue to go up. If this is all the correction, and that could be all the correction because they broke the structure, right? If that is all the correction, we are going up. So you want to get the short-term sell, and you definitely want the buy. Because the buy would either be an up move, or the buy is going to be one more up move here, come back down, and then go. Right? This could be a three-wave pattern. See that? That is possible, right? We make those three-wave patterns. So the buy, the, the sell and the buy are both, are both temporary. They're short terms for now. The sell is a very short term one. The buy is a very good one. You definitely don't want to miss the buy because if you're lucky, that's the start of the big uptrend. I think everybody remember the big uptrend we showed you, right? This trade was posted a while back. Remember that big uptrend. We actually started it. That's your first move up. If this is all your correction, this thing will continue to go, go, go. So you want the buy. You wait for the short sell and then you want the buy. If you're wrong about it, you get the sell, you get an impulse to the upside, you get this sell, you get an impulse to the upside and you get one more down before they go, right? Right, one more downside, breaking this low, sorry, before they go. But there's a good chance you're just gonna take off. So. Don't miss the buy, even if you miss the sell. Don't miss, miss the buy setup because the buy setup has much more potential right now. They could come back. They could spend more time in this consolidation. I don't see why they can't do that. Then come here. They'll break this low for sure before they go back up. Right? So watch this trade. Euro Swiss. Some downside possible. They're making a nice flag here. I think Euro Swiss will tag the stop first, though. They need to break this stop before they go down. I can see Euro Swiss coming, tagging this stop and then going down, right? So short term, there may be a sell setup forming here now. I, I don't really like the sell setup because they're gonna go up some more. So we probably wait, look for the up for the buy setup on this one. Eurocad, this is a sell setup. We took I think some of my traders should be in this trade. This is a trade call we make this morning in the trading room. Right? Where is it going? Let's go look at it. We made one, two, three. And remember I was saying downside, downside, more downside. So put this in a daily. You've got a move down, you're getting consolidation. Well, look for another move down at least. And then we'll see if they continue to go up or if they actually just keep going down, right? Because we are, we are in the uptrend. And if they break back into the downtrend, then this would become a long-term downside. But when, you, when you're in the consolidation, it could be anything. They could come here, go back to the top, and then come down, right? So we'll have to wait and see how that works. But for the trade you're looking this week, it's a sell setup. Mostly gone already. You can get some more downside, but that sell setup is gone. If this pulls back, if they don't break the low and pull back to the top here, this would be a perfect sell setup from the top there, right? So if this just goes back up here without breaking the low, you get a perfect sell setup from here going down. And don't miss that one. Euro yen. Euro yen, we're looking for sell setups now. The, the buy is over. Remember I used to tell you guys about that buy coming when this was going down, that this one is a buy to test this area. One, two, three. 
it will happen, well, it happens. So now we're looking for cell setups. Why are we looking for cell setups now? There's a good chance this has to correct itself first, and there's a good chance they come back to this level. See that? So if we get a cell setup, we'll take it, and they may come back here before they go again, if they go again, right? Let's go to the daily. Daily, you see we have some divergence there. So we're thinking this one, two, three, that one, two, three, it's gonna come back down. We're looking for a cell setup from here to the trend line and then to this trend line, and then we'll see what happens. They break or they bounce. Go to the four hour and you're looking for that trade. You may be getting a cell setup right now on the chart. See that you may be getting a cell setup right now. Take it with care. This would be the first opportunity for a cell. So it doesn't mean this one will go. So you give this one a try if you know how to trade it. And if this goes, you're lucky. If it doesn't go, you get a break-even trade and then you go for the next one. Actually, it's a good sell setup. Europang, we're in the sell. Two things could happen right now. I think all of you remember this chart. When we were forecasting, when it was coming down here, when we forecast that move up, well, it happened. So where is the next big move? downside nothing has changed in this chart if you're following me for for more than a month you will see nothing has changed i just keep the chart as it is so two things can happen right now the downside might not be ready as yet be careful they can come down here a little go back up make one more and then the downside this trade is going to happen whether they make one more up and then fall or they fall right now so let's go look at what the trade setup is This is not convincingly going down as yet, right? So there's a good chance that if they do this, they will go back up for one more before you get the big trade. So if you're in the cell, put the protection. It depends on where you got in. Some of our traders are in from here. Some of them just took it here. You know, if you're in the trade, put that to break even so that you get a break even trade. Don't take a cell right here, right now. We don't have a cell set up there, right? There's a good chance this actually goes up. So what you can do is you can you can wait to sell beyond this. Let it break this structure here. If it breaks out to the downside, then you sell. When you get it in the positive, put it to break even because once they tag this low, they can go back up. Right? There is a possibility for one more up, but then the big trade is coming. If this is the fall and you're in the sell, what do you care? That remember, you're looking for a sell. You're not looking for the buy to the upside. If it makes a higher high, then you look for a sell again. Right? You're not looking for a buy. If you keep a massive stop, I'm not, I'm not inclined to keep the massive stop, but if you keep it, that's okay. Right? Just make sure that the stop isn't positive because if you keep a ma massive stop, it has to be way above the top. I would not encourage to get out for the trade small, take small profit, take break even, and then re-enter at the top again. Right? It's a much better trade. It's something I can show you in another webinar, why it's better to do that way. Pong Oz. Pong Oz is in a consolidation. I think this one will slowly come here, but we may retest the top, right? So it's not a good, it's a sell setup, but not the best sell setup. So I would probably not take this trade. Although it's a, it's a kind of, you can see they may come here. If I get a good buy setup when they come here, if this comes here and give you a buy setup, look for the buy. It's better to look for the buy than the sell there. Pong New Zealand. You're getting a cell set up here. I think all of you can see this. And then we look for upside. So this is a short trade, just like the Euro New Zealand. This is a short trade and then you look for upside, right? I think more upside is coming. If you're wrong about it and they keep going down, well, you're in the sell already, right? If you're selling here and you're expecting to take profit when they break the low, move your stop into profit. If you're wrong and they keep going down, you're in a good trade. If you're right, they take you out, you look for the buy setup. Pong Yen. Pong Yen was one that didn't go, so let's look at Pong Yen. We thought Pong Yen would come tag this low. This trade should come tag the low and then go back up, right? Well, that didn't happen. They had a very nice structure to break, actually. Put it in the one hour, you'll see that. They did break the structure. Let me put that trend line, but they didn't go. So we were saying they'll break the structure. They broke it very slightly. You can see they broke out of it, but that did not go. Turn went up. So we're not in the buy, but that's not a big deal. If you're not in the buy, you don't have to worry. If you took the sell trade, so let's say you took this breakout. It wasn't a signal to sell because there wasn't a big breakout, but let's say you took the breakout. 
your stop should be right here, right? That's where your stop should be, not anywhere else. So I don't see if you take that trade, why you should ever still be in the trade or why you should be taking a loss. Because that means you're not, you know, understanding what is, once they didn't respect that, once it's starting to break out, it's anything could happen. So we have got a one, two, three structure here now. A one, two, and we're in the third one. And we haven't broken the tops. We're not breaking the tops. So if you're not breaking the tops, you will come back here. There's a likelihood we can see this come back all the way to retest the slope. I'm still looking for, we're in a big sideways move, just to let you know. That is, a, this is your impulse. And all of this is a big sideways move. They can come back here and then go back up. So we will look for that sell setup. I'm not looking for a buy at the top here. Not at the top here. Not at the top here. Not at the top here. I'm not looking for buys. I'm looking at those levels. I'm looking for sell. Because the pattern is incomplete. Not because there's a, there's a resistance there. Because there's an incomplete pattern. And unless that pattern completes itself, I don't see them totally going up. Right? So I think more downside is in there. If I'm right, I'll get the sell. If I'm wrong, I'll watch it. It's easy. When I make a forecast so that you guys understand how forecast. When you make a forecast, you wait for the confirmation of the trade. Right, so let's say I forecast this to the downside. I don't sell it immediately. I wait for the confirmation of the trade. When I get that confirmation, I take the trade. If I don't get the confirmation, which means I'm wrong on my forecast, and pretty much I'm wrong, that's okay. They will continue to go up, and I'm not in a trade. So I don't get it when people said, hey, you said it's going to go down, and I sold it, and now I'm upside down, and I'm like, why did you sell it? Why did you sell it? What was your trade setup? You didn't have a trade setup. Well, then you shouldn't be selling it. It's that easy. Forecasting and trade setups are two different things, right? And money management is a whole new story too. So you have to make sure you know what you're doing. Don't just jump into trade. Punk ad, good sell setup for you guys, right? You can see that coming. If it breaks, it's a good trade. It has potentially a big move to the downside. Punk chief. Perfect sell setup when it breaks. Potentially, this trade has a huge downside. So let me show you where the huge downside is. Look at this. See that one? When it broke the structure, we were expecting this to happen. We forecast this one from here. That was the first forecast to the downside. See that forecast? that this was going to break and come test this low. Well, they already broke out of the structure. They're consolidating under the structure. And if they break that, you're in a trade. So you can go and see what it did. All right, let's go back. We broke out from that one. We already broke out. We consolidate. Let's go see what it's doing. They consolidate. They give you a very nice consolidation. They're breaking the consolidation. That is your trade. Let it break out. Go to the daily. Take off this. You're making another flag here. Go to the four hour. So if they make another flag and they break here, make a flag, you take this trade to the downside and then you wait for the break and then you have about a thousand pips to the downside before that trade is over. And you can keep it for the entire thousand pips. Because when that starts to fall, it is likely going to go. They will tag this low. They're going to break that low. We said that way back when it was here, right? You can't see it on the daily, but it weekly, the forecast was made here, that this is going to go down and break the low. They made one pullback. They made another pullback. This one should go now. See? Does this thing work? I think it works good. So, And that forecast was made over a year ago. If you were following me a year ago, you would have seen that forecast. So don't miss this trade. I think it has huge potential to the downside. You can at least get about a thousand pips from it. Let's see, one hour, is it ready? No, it's not ready. As a matter of fact, on the one hour, this thing might make an up move and everybody's gonna say, hey, you said that thing is going down a thousand pips, but it made an up move. Well, that's okay. We're still in this going up. When it starts to break and fall, it will give you a thousand pips. Right now, it's in this big consolidation. One up, one down, one more up. When this up one finished, then you get the trade. You're not supposed to sell it right now. Right? Just wait for the trade. 
Aussie yen. Aussie yen is a little surprised. It keeps going up and up. So you can look for buy setups, but there isn't a buy setup in here. If they come back here, they'll give you a buy setup, right? Like this, if they pull back there, then you don't have a buy setup in the Aussie yen. You don't have a buy setup in the New Zealand yen. Same thing here. You will have to wait for them to pull back nice. This was a pullback that you wouldn't have sold. You would have looked for a sell setup actually and a pullback like that is a too sharp one, right? This one would probably come down. If it comes to this level, then we look for a buy setup, right? So this thing has nothing to sell here, nothing to buy as yet, stay out of them. Swiss yen, we stay out of this, but there may be a sell setup forming for if you're an aggressive trader. One more down, then up. CAD yen, this one keeps pushing up too. You can see they're not giving you flag. That's not a flag, this is not a flag. If they do that, that wouldn't be a flag. So there's no buy setup. But if they break, you can look for a sell setup here and then the upside. One more downside and then the upside. Right? So unless they break and give you a structure to sell, you can't. You don't have a buy setup in it. Those are, this was probably a buy setup. A tough one, but probably this is not a buy setup. Right? So you just leave it alone. New Zealand CAD, you're getting a sell setup. Actually, it's gone. The trade is gone itself, but I think they can go a lot to the downside. So if you get another flag, you trade it. If you get another small flag, you can take the trade. They're coming to this low. Right, this, this should be a good trade. Wait for the flag because potentially it could go both ways. It could go up and it could come down. Well, they're breaking the structure, so we're anticipating more downside here. Right? Potentially it's both ways from this trend line. It's up or it's down. So we took off the down one because it's already going down. So watch for that trade. It might be a good one if you, I think you probably wait for it. Wait for a small flag on a one hour or 15 minutes and then take the trade. Because if you take the trade here, you have to keep a stop above this stop. Not the best place, right? So you probably wait for a flag, get in, wait for a flag, get in, you get a better risk to reward trade. Uh, Cadian, we'll look at that, the long-term trade to the upside. I think I know what you're talking about. Wait for the pullback to buy it. We'll, we'll come to that just now. We'll relook at it. Aussie Cat. Aussie Cat also breaking down. This doesn't have a very good setup right now. See, they broke once already, so you have to wait for them to break the low pullback and then get the trade. It's not a good trade as it is right now because, you know, once they break the low and they make divergence, this pullback is not an aggressive sell setup. Best thing to do is stay out, right? Uh, if you guys keep your questions to the end of the webinar, we'll answer all the questions because I can't do both at the same time. We'll take all the questions and answer them. Aussie, New Zealand, I'm expecting one more down. Let's show you this trade. Right now it's coming up. Short term, they are up trades, but we were expecting them to tag this low before they go. And I'm almost 80% sure they're going to tag that low because if you look at the bigger structure, this is what you have. You have an impulse down, a correction up, an impulse down, a correction up. One more impulse down and the impulse has to break this low. So this is going up, but eventually it's going to fall there and then go back up, right? So if you're going to look for a buy setup on this, eventually you will want to let them break the low before you do that. Short term buy setup is here. If you're taking a buy to the upside in the short term, not a bad trade. But those are very short term trades, right? This, is, this can come break the top again, but it's a short term trade. Because eventually they're gonna get to that low and then go back up. So for me, the buy, the buy on this one will come when they get to this level. If I get a sell setup, I'll sell it. I don't have a sell setup right now. But if I get one, I'll sell it and then I'll be looking for the buy, right? Not much of a squeeze. This is this is not a squeeze. This is just a big correction. This is a big daily correction if you're talking about this. That is a big daily correction. An impulse up, a big correction down, and then the next impulse. Right? This, so this one is pretty simple. Guys, if you can hold your questions to the end, right, you will get the answers to, I'll leave time for that and I'll answer every single thing. All right, let's go. XAG, we need to finish the chart. XAG, sell set up. You watch it, they're probably... Okay, let me talk about this one because I think this is more important for your, your trading. One guy said, remember I said they're giving a little upside, a little upside, guys, but he's always talking about buying it. Look, it's going down. Yes, 
Good thing it's going down. I can buy. This is entry order. This is entry order. This is entry order. And if I see them go lower, I'll increase that entry order. All the way to 10, I'll be having entry orders. And if they go lower than 10, I'll mortgage my house, which does not have a single cent mortgage at it, and buy silver. Because it cannot go beyond 10. It's common sense. It's very, it's very, you know, if you don't understand that basic principles in here, you better don't trade. Right? We are, we are actually happy this thing is going down. We are waiting for it because we are in buys already and we will buy more. That's the whole point. Because when it comes here, if you, if you want to see what I mean by that, here is an example. Let me show you this. You see those lines there, those three lines? Remember those three lines because you're going to see it here. And if that guy who is not so smart was here, he would say, what is he talking about buying? Look, it's going down. You want to see what happened in there? Let's go take a look. That is what I'm talking about. Buy the thing when it gets into those areas. You see how perfect that area was? This one is good enough. Look for those buy setups. Right? You have to use good money management, which means that when I take all those buys, here is how I calculate money management. When I take all those buys, if silver goes to zero, I would be in like, say, about 75% drawdown. Does that make sense to everybody? If silver goes to zero, I will be at 75% drawdown on all my buys. Any one of you think silver will get to zero? Yes, the account I'm trading that one is without leverage. Well, so then I'll never, I'll never have to worry about getting 75% drawdown. If you're trading it with leverage, you just have to take very small lot size, right? If you're trading your account with leverage, calculate your risk. Understand it's very close to zero, 10 to zero. You can calculate, see how much, if it goes $10 down, what lot size you need to take so that your account does not blow up. That's all. And it will never get to zero, right? I can almost guarantee you that. I can't promise you, but I can almost guarantee you that if it gets to zero, you will be one lucky person. Because from zero, it's going to spike up so fast. Right? Uh, the, the problem with gold and the, the difference with, with trading gold and trading this, I could trade silver without stop. I wouldn't trade gold without stop. Because gold has $1,000 to fall. And it doesn't matter how small lot size you take, a thousand dollar could darn well blow your account up if you're trading with leverage. If you're not trading without leverage, you will have a very, very, very deep drawdown. And I don't think anybody would be happy about that because I'm trading investor account. And I don't think he would be happy about that, right? But on silver, he's pretty okay with that. He understand what I'm doing, so he's pretty okay with that, right? So once he's happy, I'm happy, right? So. Look at this. We are going to get some more downside. I think they will retest this low. This, I think this one, is not, uh, this one is not true, but they had one that came here. But we can see this come down here, breaking this low, and then going back up. I can see this happening. You follow that? Come here and then go back. Maybe even breaking this low. I don't think they'll break that low, but they could break it. And if they break that low, that means they're going to come to the, about this level. That is why I have another one there and then go up. So if all three of those trades get tagged, I'll be one happy person, right? If they tag all three of those trades and then go up, I would be one happy person. So that's the whole point. Let them come and tag all three of those trades. Let's go. Gold. Gold is coming down. We think gold might come down about this level. I told you guys already, we're in the sell a small sell here. Think gold is going to come to this level and then go back up. This looks like a flat. If it keeps going down, I will be even happier because we're in the cell. But I don't think it's going to go much more beyond this level. Right? I'm looking at this as a small correction in the middle and come to this level and then go back up. Right? So gold should probably come to this level. Targets to the upside. Use your targets. You'll, you'll trade it to the 270. In this case, maybe the 786 would be that 270. Let's see. Yeah, somewhere around the 786 there. You can trade this up back to about this level. If you get a good buy set up here and you get goes, you can get it all the way to about this level. 
right? So that would be a good trade too, right? You just have to make sure you get the real buy setup. If it goes lower, no problem. It's even better for me, right? If they come lower than this level and then go up, that is even better, right? I don't know how low they're going to go, but minimum, I think they should tag this low. That's the minimum expectation. Tag the low and then go back. So let's see if that happens. U.S. oil, break the low and turn to the upside. Remember we said they need to break this low. It's the same thing like I'm showing you in silver and gold. They need to break the low and then turn to the upside. If you're following me, that's what I'm saying, right? Watch them, they'll come break this low and then they'll go back up. So my traders are in the buy, right? They broke the low, they go back up, right? Same thing we were expecting in gold and silver, right? Break the low, then go back. What would what this is going to do now? You notice I don't have any trend lines, anything in it, because the entire structure is this. And it's incomplete. Whatever they're making in here is incomplete, which means we really don't know what the pattern is. It's a very complex pattern. We can tell you what parts of these patterns are doing. We need, we need to wait. So I would look for them to come back to this level and see if they're gonna break up or if they're gonna go back down, which means if we get a more complex correction in there, right? We don't know which it's going to be. So we trade it very, very safe. And this one, you're trading back to this top. Make sure it doesn't break this. You notice we didn't break that, right? Which means this will give you a deep pullback. You can probably see them do that. They'll probably give you a pullback, go again, give you a pullback, go again. We'll, we'll follow the trend up. When they get there, you start being careful. Just like when they come to this level, you start being careful for reversals. Right? It's the same thing. So they're going sideways. It means that there's a pattern that is developing that we can't confirm because it's not a pattern that I've seen. It's not a flat. It's not a triangle. It's not a zigzag. It's nothing that I've seen in the chart as yet, which means it's a part of one of those bigger patterns. Right? There are flats in here, there are zigzags in here, but those are smaller, the lower degree. We need to allow the entire thing to finish, and then we have a good view of what the bigger degree correction is. And then we can. But if you ask me personally what I think it could be in terms of my experience of trading, I can tell you that I can see this whole piece is one piece, and this probably will come back lower. Right? So I can see this entire structure even retesting the low but that is not confirmed as yet. This big co correction here could still go back one more up and then come down, but the entire structure is looking very flat. Which yes, look, not a B wave. I think it's gonna be an X wave because we had an X wave here already. If you look at the weekly, we already had one impulse to the downside. See that? I'm not even talking about this big one. I'm talking about this one. We had a wave here, a wave here, and one down, we can get a wave here and we can get one more down here. Looking at this structure here, one, two, three, four, five, and then the upside, right? That is a possibility. So we think they can go back one more low. We need confirmation. We need to wait for that. Right now, just trade it up. You're trading short term, trade it short term to the upside. No big trade. Just wait for a short term trade to the upside. Same thing with UK oil. Same thing with natural gas. Natural gas, stay out of it, right? It's looking upside right now, but it's in a consolidation here. So either they come back, retest that top, either they go back, retest the low. We don't have a pattern that is tradable in there right now, right? No pattern is tradable. You notice you have a sharp move up, a sharp move down, and that's it. That's not a tradable pattern. Wait. They'll have to confirm the direction. New Zealand, Swiss, you can look for a sell setup. Actually, it has a perfect sell setup right now. I'm not making a trade call, but I'm telling it has a perfect sell setup. Put a stop, watch it when it comes to this level. It will either break through or it will go back for one more up and then come down, right? So it has a perfect sell setup right now. I'm not telling anyone you should trade it, right? That's not my call. It's making some kind of a triangular pattern in there. Let's wait and see, but it's a good sell setup with a small risk on it. Small risk does not mean the amount of pips. Small risk means the percentage in your account you will be risking on the trade. But let's get that clear with everybody. Because a lot of people still need to watch that webinar I did with what is um, risk to, how we, how we calculate your risk to reward, right? Money management. Looks upside, going upside. If you're looking for a trade here, you gotta take it short term. Just wait for pullback, take the breakout, wait for pullback, take the breakout. Aussie chief. Looks like we can get one more down in this pattern here, but not a very good setup. 
anything with an Aussie, I know this does not have a good setup on them, so probably leave them alone, right? What is Bitcoin doing? I haven't looked at it for a while. Okay, they, they, they had this downside and they're breaking to the upside now. Bitcoin is in a big sideways move, big correction. They did make the two drops we were looking for. They drop once, drop again, and they're in a big sideways move. Watch it, they can retest the top. And if they retest the top, if you get buy setups and you buy this all the way to this top, and if they go retest the top, well, good for you, take profit. Because once they start breaking that top, a big drop could come, right? So if you're trading this, Remember, there's no problem in trading it. You just don't want to be the last person to be taking profit, right? That's the whole problem with this. If you're the last person taking profit, you might left without any profit, right? That's the whole point in it. What else you guys look at? Let me see. I think S&P 500, it's going sideways. It's in this pattern. looks like an ending diagonal looking pattern at the top there. So they're going sideways here, probably a correction, maybe one more up correction maybe one more up eventually they'll make a big correction to the downside you can see the divergence in the chart and the fall is about to happen but they can still keep going up small upside very slow right so if you get the buy setup take it right if you get those buy setups very short trades take profit anything to the upside take profit if you get a nice sell setup hold it copper not doing anything stay out of copper it's not really doing anything. It's looking downside right now if you look at this, right? If they break here, downside, but it's not doing anything. Just stay out of it. I don't like copper at this moment for a trade. Uh, what else? DAX, let's see what this is doing. Downside, as we promised you, remember we said watch these patterns. If you're not in a cell, they will consolidate, drop, take the trade, right? Czar, we are expecting some upside. Let me look at that pretty fast and then we'll take some questions. Upside, I think they'll come tag this top. I'm expecting them to go tag that top. Let me show you that pattern. Everybody remember it? Look, it's here. Impulse, correction, impulse. Impulse, correction, impulse. See? Pretty easy, right? If you know what you're looking for. If you understand how to read the charts, it's pretty easy. If you don't, well, then that's a problem. Nifty, Nifty, I think right now is, is, is going back up. This morning it was going back up, yes. So we broke out. They're going back up. Let's see what happens. I would not be in the bias yet. I'll wait for the buy. If I have to wait for the buy, I'll probably wait for, you know, they can come here and come back, make this correction a bigger one. So I think the buy is a little too early. If you're in the buy, move it to break, to break even at least. Right? So let's go. I'll take one more and then I'll go. Let me see what else you guys want to look at. Too many charts. If we keep doing this, it's going to be like 10 hours. So let's call it off for now. More charts we'll look at next week. Uh, I'll stop. I'll just keep the recording rolling for like 10 minutes more and let's take questions. Let's go now. Not charts. What were the questions you guys have? When you started to talk about new students, you said uh, it will be in July, end of July. Yes, at the end of July, if you don't have a, a, a Skype message from me, send me a message reminding me. I'll send you the details at the end of July. You will still have two months before we start. Or a month and a half at least. Are you posting anywhere during the week? Only, only in my trading room. No, on trading view, I'll be I'll, not a trading view. That's for sure. Never will be posting there again. I will be posting on the trading floor on Saxo, but not yet. I'm waiting for the Saxo chart. I'm still using TradingView chart. Saxo promised to bring out a new charting package, and when they do, I will use theirs. I don't want to use TradingView charts to post in Saxo. Not a good idea. Uh, when do you know when a pattern is completed? That's a whole six weeks course, and you will know it. Are you active on Skype? No, I don't answer you. Don't send me charts on Skype and Facebook and all of that. Let me just tell you why. I have over 10,000 followers. If you add them up on Skype and Facebook and, you know, all those places. If everyone send me a question to answer, you understand that physically I can't do it, right? It's not possible. And once you start doing it, you will get more and more. Some people send me six charts and they want you to comment on it. Please be reasonable because I have a group of people who paid me to do that. And even they don't send me charts. All their charts are discussed in the trading room, right? I need to trade. Remember, my first thing is I trade. I trade for investors. 
So I need to spend time doing that. Uh, what's your opinion on the maximum leverage of an account? The more leverage you take, the more you're risking money. Remember that. It's not about the maximum. The least leverage you take, the safer your account is. The problem with traders is not that they get the direction wrong on buying and selling. The problem is you're borrowing money and you're doing, it that, doing that, right? So the more money you borrow, the higher your risk becomes. Think of it this way. If you take your $5,000 and you go tomorrow and you buy euro with it, you go to the bank and you convert it to the euro and you take that euro and you put it in your pocket. You don't have to worry, right? You're like any European. You have euro in your, your pocket. Nothing will happen. No bank will call you and say, hey, you have margin call. They will not do that, right? But when and if and when euro goes up, you can go and change it and make some money. You can hold it for as long as you want. But when you take the 5000 you give it to a broker and you borrow 500000 from him and you take 200000 of that money and you go and you buy euro, Every time euro moves a pip, your money is, is, is going away. It will only take euro to move a certain amount of pip before your $5,000 goes away. That's it. That's the problem with it, right? If you get what I'm saying. So the problem is risk, but you need, if you have small account, you need leverage. Leverage is an advantage for you if you're in the right side of the trade. So if you trade small, which means if you borrow the money, but you trade small, you risk a, a very small percent of your 5000 that you have, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, I think you can do a demo with them at least. If, if you, you, you can follow me. No, to follow me, you don't need to register for, for Saxo, right? You can just follow me on the trading floor. And if I, when, when I start posting there, you will get those, those charts. If you can get 500% annually, no, it's not possible. You have to be a super trader. How much percent? Uh, at the beginning of the webinar, you told us not all the new students will take. Oh, so many, the, the questions are going away. I will, you told us not all the takes. How can you be sure we will take it in September? No, 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 I didn't say that. I said all who already sent me a message will be in the course. We can even take 10 or 15 more people. That is what I said. I said, if you're new to trading and you don't have one year experience, then you will not be allowed. So everybody who takes the course, they have at least one year experience. A lot of people wrote me, they said they don't have a year experience. I tell them to wait, right? Yes, leverage is good if you're good at risk management. That's a question too. If you guys write your question to attendees, everybody can see them. Can you analyze a 10-year treasure? We can do that the next time. Let's see. Let me stop the recording. It's going to be too long.